All right, joining me on the show this week, um, a, a producer and an artist, someone I needed to link with because, you know, I've been chatting with Mason Dane and Asher in the last coming weeks. And one of their producers, Leon Thomas, has been working with all the hot artists coming out of Australia. So he joins us. Bro, thanks for taking the time. No, of course. What's up, man? Oh, man, you out here living the dream. You're just hanging out in the car. See Mason Dane's in there with you. Yeah, of course. You know, Mason's up in here, you know. It's, it's interesting because when I asked you like to do this chat, you know, I, I knew you had been producing and in the studio with the likes of Mason Dane and Asher and day one. And then when I really looked into your music, um, I found out that you're an artist as well. And you have this like ambient product project that you do as well. Before I started producing, I always played piano. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to find something that I could make. And like, I was obsessed with like dubstep and Skrillex and all of that. And then I found like sub genres of, dubstep and stuff and there was like future garage and like chill step and that was something i was like super super interested in and like it very much incorporated like piano and i was like i could really write like almost like score stuff and then add drums to it to make it like energetic and electric like what i like to listen to you know and then i don't know liam thomas like the ambient artist kind of kind of came about and then started to get recognition like in germany and stuff where does your music background come from? Like, did you grow up playing music early age? Well, I grew up um, and my mum would like bought me like a little keyboard, like when I was maybe like when I first moved to Australia, when I was eight. Mm -hmm. So I grew up a little bit in the Middle East and a little bit in Wales because I'm Welsh. I'm originally Welsh. Nice. So, um, and then when I moved to Australia, my mum's like, oh, you, like you should do uh, piano lessons because I love singing. I used to sing all the time. But I don't sing anymore, obviously, but I used to <laughs> sing all the time. And then I started playing piano and at the start I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if this is for me. And she's like, no, you got to do it. And she's like, I remember she used to like set timers on my piano of like when I had to practice and when the timer was up, I could go do whatever I want. And then she'd like come over and make sure that I was playing like on my tips and like my back was straight. And then I got my first piano teacher and she was like a jazz pianist. So I learned really how to improvise and like different scalings and like going from minor to majors and stuff. And then my second piano teacher was more classical. So I think it like also taught me like, oh, you got to learn your theory. You got to learn your scales. You got to learn all that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that that, that music, uh, those music lessons and that type of learning techniques and scales would come into play in your music production, you know, especially uh, later on in life? I don't know. I had no idea. Cause I didn't know that I was going to do production. Um, but I remember in grade six, hearing like Skrillex's Scary Monsters and Nice Surprise for like the first ever time. And I was like, what is this? Like, how did he make this? You know what I mean? And then I like used to, used to like read about it and watch videos on it, but I didn't really get it. And then I finally figured out like it was on Ableton. So he was making everything on Ableton and stuff. And then I've got Ableton Lite in high school and you can't save on it. You can't export your demos and stuff. Yeah, I know so I used about to, that. I used to like, Oh, it's ridiculous. And then, so I used to record my others, like record the audio from the computer like, into Audacity and then like export like 30 seconds at a time and stuff and then chop up a song and then finally got intro and then you can only have 20 tracks. <laughs> so it was like, you know what I mean? But finally got the, the big one, got Sweet. My dad bought it for my, I think my 17th birthday. My dad bought me Sweet and a pair of JBL monitors mm -hmm. and then didn't look back since, you know what I mean? So for you, you know, you've got these two different sides of who Liam Thomas is, you know, you have the ambient, but then you have this hip hop producer side. Is it easy for you to switch hats and kind of like get into one zone and get out of the other one really quickly? When I go into like a hip hop session, I don't really look at it as a hip hop session. So like you'll hear a lot on the new, the day one EP coming out soon. And like other stuff that I've done is like I try to incorporate a bit more of like realish, like, I don't know how to explain it, but less hip hop and more like pop, hip hop, R&B, mm -hmm. and mix, mix in genres that sometimes don't, don't particularly mix in the genre that the artist is making, if that makes sense. We're seeing a lot more melody come into hip hop. We're seeing a lot more rock, you know, come back in again. So yeah, of course. It's exactly what you're saying right there, you know, m you know, I guess manipulating what you have learned and what you also do in your other side and how do you bring that to hip hop, which I think is what sets you apart with your production skills, bro. I guess it's like, I don't know, the way I look at a song is like no two hooks should be the same. No two verses should ever be the same. Like even if it's like you add like a tambourine or like a shaker, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, it'll, it'll split up those two hooks and then it's always fresh to the listener's ear. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, no, no, I feel you on that. And, and, and that's, I think, you know, the modern style of what hip hop has, you know, I guess, um, m- molded into for you, you know, right now you're, and I asked this same question to Mason and I think Asher, when I talked to him as well, you know, the crew that you're running with all seem to be on fire. They all seem the music that they're dropping is so on point with like the global yeah, sound. How is it for you right now, like being amongst that? It's always like when I was living, so I'm from Brisbane. I lived in Brisbane, like all my Australia life. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've only recently just moved to Sydney. But I remember when I was living in Brisbane, I'd see like, you know, day one, Creed the Kid, Mason and like with Ziggy and Manny. And I'd be like, I wish I was a part of that. But I knew like deep in my head that maybe one day that that had come to tuition. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then when I moved to Sydney and I met them all for the first time, um, we just like instantly became all best friends and like it's very much our crew and our like group it's very much like a family rather than a team you know what i mean mm-hmm. but it's it's crazy like something that i'd never imagined being part of such a big and strong collective of of creatives and individuals and a lot of personalities too you know yeah it's it's the best yeah. it's like i really am like living a dream at 20 years old you know what i mean yeah, for sure. And it looks like you guys are. I'm, I, I'm all up over your socials and stuff. H- how did you kind of, you know, I guess, link with, you know, those teams? You know, you followed them before and you love what they're doing. And then you got to Sydney and you went, you know what? Let me be a part of this. I was working with Creed. I met Creed through one of my boys, Prince, um, who is an artist in Brisbane. And he brought Creed to the studio this one time to do this feature. And like I reproduced the track. And then Creed really, really liked my stuff and he really fucked with it and, and stuff like that. And then. I guess Creed told Ziggy and then um, from there, like I started meeting everyone and then Prince had a song with Mason that needed to be reproduced. So I reproduced that and then that became like a really popular song around our group and stuff. And then I met Mason and then like me and Mason slowly decided to become friends. And then the first time I came to Sydney, like me and Mace, like I had a little B&B in Bankstown and Mace came through and like, I had no idea Mace could make all of this pop stuff and like all of this crazy music, you know? And like, we were like, should we make a, make a track? And we're like, yeah, it's like, started making a pop record. And we're like, I was like, oh shit, like, we're going to be best friends. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like, and then, I don't know. And then I met Bailey in Brisbane too, like day one. And yeah, just all, all grew from there. And mm-hmm. like, I don't know, it was, it was very natural. I didn't even know how to explain it, but yeah, it was all super natural, you know? Talk to me about that, you know, the, the whole reproduction. Cause you know, I don't really <clears throat> talk to artists about this that much usually. Um, but you know, in the, in this day and age with the way that people get beats from different places and then they, you know, you can't use that beat cause they don't have the license or it's, you know, from a different artist that you can't use. And then they bring in producers to reproduce beats. Is that something for you that like, do you go, uh, kind of shy away from that because of, as an artist and wanting to produce your own stuff or is that just part of the game these days? I'm almost known for like people will bring me tracks to be reproduced because like I'll hear the song like I'll, I'll tend to not really listen to the demo the first version of it because I'll put a whole new spin on it and like some songs that I've reproduced have become completely different songs but mm-hmm. in the most amazing way you know what I mean and I don't know, flipping songs for me is like, I love doing that. Like when I was making my first ever music, I used to just get acapellas from like pop songs and like try to make, remake them and like stuff like that. I love reproducing, but I guess it can come about, but you also got to know like your place. If you hear the song and you think, oh no, this doesn't need to reproduce, but like the artist really wants you to do it. It's like, oh, you know, I don't think I could get it up to the level that it was. So you got to also know when to say no and know your place in that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, are there any are there any producers out there? I know you, you mentioned Skrillex earlier and, you know, he's been at the top of the game for a minute in the EDM and then, you know, he crossed over into the hip-hop realm as well and then you see Marshmallow do that. For you, are there any other producers out there that you, you know, I guess follow or kind of were inspired by? Um, Flume was a massive one to me. Um, I got a Flume tattoo on my arm of my favourite Crazy. Song. Represent um, for Flume. Flume. Flume is the king ever, like, even Skrillex is my favorite, favorite producer, favorite artist ever. Um, in terms of hip hop wise, like I love Take a Day Trip. They're some of my favorite because they use like mostly analog stuff, which is pretty, pretty special. Um, of course, like Murder. Um, there's loads of loads of producers that I love, but I probably get too too in deep with that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, I know, mate. There's 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 a there's a, a huge variety of them. You know, you did the uh, the Creed the Kid track Bankroll, which was one of the first that. 
I listened to and was like knew actually who you were at that stage. Yes. Um, you know, for you, is it, are you sending out these, these beats to the guys or are you really in there in the studio creating them while they're writing at the same time? So I, I, tend to like never ever send beats and like artists will ask me and I, I never ever you can even ask Mace like I will never ever send beats out usually because I like creating it with the artist on in scratch because I can do it quite fast mm-hmm. and I like to like almost direct it a little bit and like I don't know if you've ever watched like Dr. Dre the way he produces a song with the yeah. artist he's like in there directing it and he's there like really like putting it together with the artist and if the artist is there with you then like it's so like custom to them and it's so like it's very personal. So when I'm in the studio with the artists, I like it to be personal. And because some producers you'll get in, they'll cook you a beat and then they just don't talk to you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'll really make the song with them. Um, like I, I can't write lyrics. I, I cannot write lyrics. It's one thing <laughs> I, I could never ever do. But like sometimes if I have one come in my head, I'll be like, Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. Even if they don't use it, you know, I, I love the whole process of making a song. It's like, it literally drives me to, get up out of bed every single day making music and making songs is just the best and being with an artist like like seat to seat is is just the best feeling ever what's the 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 most recent moment you've been in the studio with an artist that it's really just gone oh my god this shit is fucking fire we need to do it is there any like that come to mind um i've been working a bit with uh with manu crooks mm-hmm. and um we finished one up recently and i heard it and i was like holy shit this is the one. Um, but there's, there's a lot, there's like stuff I've done with Mason and Asha where we've, we've made stuff and we're like, did we really make this? You know what I mean? And like, I don't know. It's like, it's very much, very much like that. It's like, I feel like every song I make though, I get so, so excited about and I'll I'll replay it and replay it and replay it until like, I can't listen to it anymore. So when it comes out, I don't even listen to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I finished the, the day one EP, like when we did the last track, um, it was me, Mason, and, and, and Day One in the, in the studio. And it was just uh, like when we, when we finished the track and got the mixes and like, because I mixed the project as well with Mixtree. Shout out Vivik. Um, like we, when we finally like finished it all off and got the masters, like it's just such a good feeling, you know what I mean? We'll take a switch here and talk about the ambient project that you, that you do as yeah. well. Um, you know, you've done two EPs. You've done one album, I think, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is is the, is another album on the horizon? Is that what you're working for for that, or are you kind of just music? Yeah, out? there's another another album on the on the move. I've got um, I've got three like demos. Um, I literally just went and got my neck tattooed with it as well. Oh shit! Um, I got Aurora. Yeah, Aurora. Yeah. So I, yeah, so I always get the album like maybe like months and months before I even like have half of it done. So when I did Cosmos, like I got Cosmos on my arm too. Mm-hmm. And like, um, just make it like a whole, everything. Like if you look at all my Instagram posts, like, everything's like hashtag Aurora at the bottom of all my Instagram. Cause like you want to, I, I almost like creating a world. And when I made Cosmos, it was such a massive moment for me. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a, an album, album in the, in the works hundred percent. Do you, you, you ever, you ever think that there's going to be, I guess, more of a collaboration between the ambient side of what you do and the hip hop side, or you think you really will keep them separate? Oh, uh, no, a hundred percent. Like there's definitely some artists that I've been working with on some ambient stuff, um, in the hip hop world, um, which is pretty crazy because it really gets them out of their comfort zone as well, which is always like something really cool that I love doing with artists is really like getting them completely out of their zone. You know what I mean? Damn, bro. I'm excited to hear that. And, you know, like I said to you when we first started chatting, I've been watching you and I've been watching your crew and the way you guys are moving at the moment is so exciting and just beautiful to watch in the the Aussie music scene. So just keep doing what you're doing and, and keep giving me great music to play out here on the DSP, bro. Always, bro. All day, you know me. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> My bro, I appreciate your time. You go have fun with Asher and Mason Dane today. Uh, thank you so much, bro. You have a mad day. Maji.